All right, what's up guys, this is Jake, and in this video I'm gonna show you how you can set up a minimum order quantity on specific products in your store or even on all products in your store. So in another video, I showed you how you can set up a minimum order amount. So if you're looking to set up a minimum order amount, like say like $100, $200, etc., then you'll need to check out that video, which I'll link in the description. This is going to be a minimum order quantity, so based on the amount of a specific product someone orders. So let's take a look at an example here. If I were to add three of this product to the cart, and then if I were to try and check out, we can see here that minimum order quantity for selected products is five. So we only have three in the cart. And to set this up, I'm using an app called Easy Checkout Controller and I have a checkout validation rule created. So I'm gonna show you how you can set this up in your store as well, and how you can apply different rules and customizations to this to set it up to your liking. So the first thing you would need to do is just go ahead and install uh, Easy Checkout Controller by searching for it in the Shopify App Store, or I'll also leave a link to the app in the description down below. So once you have the app installed, you're gonna come down to checkout validations and we're gonna to have to create a validation rule. So this one I have created right here, if we take a look and open it up, we can see that right now we have, if the product tags contains quantity, then the quantity is less than five, we're going to block checkout right here. So we can see that we're using this example beer trimmer product and over here, we can see that this product has the tags of quantity, which is why this rule is being applied to this product. So just to show you how this would work, if I go back to the store, and then we add six of this to the cart, and then we go to check out, and then we put in the payment info again, we'll see that now checkout is no longer blocked and we would be able to actually complete checkout right here. And I could complete checkout here with this dummy information and we can see that the order went through as it should. And if I were to come back here to the store and let's say I go to another product, so let's say I'll just go to this hoodie and if we go to the products here in the store, we can see the hoodie does not have the quantity tag, so the minimum order won't apply. So I can just add one of these to the cart and go to checkout. And we can see here that the checkout won't be blocked and we'll be able to place this order once again. But if I were to go back in and try and add three of these and then try and check out, we can see that the checkout is now being blocked once again. And if I tried to actually put in this information and check out and click pay, it's going to be blocked right here. So setting this up is actually pretty easy. So like I said, you have to go to checkout validations here. And in most cases, you're going to have two conditions. So let's go ahead and create a new rule. So if we create a validation, we'll just name it minimum order to and the first thing you want to do is choose which products this is going to apply to. So if it's, and you can do that by coming to cart items, and then we can choose based on product SKU. So if you want it to apply to specific products based on SKU, then you can input the SKUs in right here. If you want it to apply based on product tags, like we did in the previous example, you can select this, or you can apply based on specific collections. So if you want it to apply to only certain collections, you can choose this and you can choose a collection right here. So let's say that in this case, I only want it to apply to pre-order products, then I can put the, I can select the pre-order collection right here. And just for reference, if you wanted this to automatically apply to all products in your store, then you don't need to specify this first condition at all. You can just put in this next condition, which we're gonna do now. So the next condition, which is going to actually enforce the minimum order, 
quantity is going to be adding in the quantity condition. So first we need to switch this from match any to match all. So this means both of these conditions are going to have to be true in order for checkout to be blocked. So now we're to come down here to cart items once again, and we're going to add in a quantity condition. So now we can do the quantity equals, and then we can make it greater than, less than, greater than or equal, or less than or equal. So you could also set up a maximum order quantity here if you wanted, but in this case, we're gonna be showing a minimum order quantity. So in this case, if the quantity is less than, let's say three, then we'll block checkout, and then you can customize the error message here. So in this case, we can make the error message something like minimum order quantity for pre-order pre products is three. And then this would go ahead and block checkout. So we can click save right here. And if we come over here to our collections and we look at pre-orders, we can see that these three products are pre-orders right here. So now we'll go and test this out on the live store. So we're gonna head over to the live store, clear the cookies real quick to empty the cart. And we're gonna come down to one of these pre-order products right here. So we'll take one of these. And I'm gonna try adding two of these to the cart. And then I'm going to check out. And we're gonna put the dummy address in. So you can see now that we attempted to check out with a pre-order product with a quantity of two, it's a minimum order quantity for pre-order products is three. So if we were to try and complete checkout here, as we showed earlier, it would be blocked. Now, if I were to come back and we go to the cart and we switch this to three, and then we try and check out again, we can see that now the error message is no longer showing and we can go ahead and complete checkout. Click pay now and we can see that now the order is successfully going through. So that's how easy it is to set up a minimum order quantity. And like I said, to change which products it applies to, all you have to do is change this first if condition right here. So in this case, we applied it to a specific collection. You can apply it to individual products uh, with specific tags and you can apply it to individual products based off of SKU as well. And if you want to apply it to all products, then you can just remove this top rule right here. And then this would apply for every product in your store. Just if the quantity is less than three, no one can check out. So another thing you can do is if you want to apply this to only specific customers, you can do that as well. So let's say we wanted to add another condition block and let's say you wanted to apply it to a specific customer. So a customer with, let's say like a B2B tag might be common. So let's say you want to set up a minimum order quantity for B2B customers, for example, and you can add in another condition. So what this would mean is that any customer that is trying to buy any products in this collection and the quantity is less than three. And if this customer is logged in with an account that has this B2B tag, then the checkout will be blocked. So you can add any number of different conditions to this minimum order setup, but the most common is, but this is most likely gonna be the most complex setup that most people are gonna be using in these cases is setting up to apply to specific products and specific customers. So that's how you would set that up for specific products and customers. And now I'm gonna show you one other thing that you can do with this. So we'll just discard these changes quickly. And we'll go back. And we're gonna create one more validation. And this time we're going to get rid of these. And I'm gonna go and we're gonna set up the if condition to be, we can see that there's another quantity here so we have quantity down here which this condition applies to specific cart items at the individual level so this will apply to products at the individual level if you want to set up a minimum order quantity that's based on all of the items in the entire cart collectively then you could use the variable here that is order total quantity under order details so i'll quickly show you how this would work so we could say if the order total quantity 
is less than 10. We could say the minimum quantity for the entire order is 10. And then of course you could apply this to specific customers as well. You're not gonna be applying this to particular products because this is going to apply to the entire cart. But if you wanted to add another condition to apply this for specific customers, you could do that. But in this case, I'll just show you how this works in its simplest form. So if we were to head back to the store once again, we'll clear the cookies and we're gonna add products to the cart that are not a part of the other rules. So the hoodie is not a part of any pre-existing rules. So what we'll do is we'll add in seven of the hoodie and we'll add in one more product and we'll add in say one of these t-shirts so this is going to be a cart quantity of eight in total so we have eight total items in the cart so we can see eight items right here and if we were to try and check out we can see minimum quantity for the entire order is 10 so this rule that we just created is now kicking in so we wanted to be able to check out we would have to go back in and add more to the cart so now we have 11 total items in the cart and if we go to check out now we can see the checkout will no longer be blocked and we could go ahead and pay now and complete this order so that's how you can set up minimum order quantity in your store there's a lot of different ways that you can set up these rules inside of the app so be sure to check out Easy Checkout Controller by clicking the first link in the description or searching for it in the App Store. If you have any questions with setting this up, leave a comment down below. And if you found this video helpful, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel for more videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one.